fact, there is approximately 7 billion humans on this earth, but 10,000 trillion different pairs of trainers. <laughs> or ants. No, it's ants, yeah. It's ants, forget that, there's 10,000 trillion ants on the planet. But sometimes it feels like there's 10,000 trillion different pairs of trainers, brands, types, types within brands. It is enough to make anyone but the absolute most knowledgeable's head spin. And I'm not the most knowledgeable. But one thing I am good at is researching a topic that I don't understand much about, breaking it down and then relaying it back to you in hopefully a way that we can all understand and it makes everything that little bit easier, including shoe choice. So by the end of this video, my aim is for you to be armed with all the tools you need to be able to select the right pair of trainers for you and you individually. And what I mean by that is that you stay injury free, that you run comfortably, and that you're hitting those PBs if that's something that you're into. That's what I want for you at the end of this video. And also, it's what I want for me. Hey, hey, what about that kid? That's not the right one, hang on, sorry. What about that kid? So that is me receiving my degree in sports science. And the reason I'm showing you that photo is because this was my dissertation on gait analysis, foot movement, types of gait, those kind of things. So I like to think that I have a little bit of background knowledge in how your feet move, how you move when you're running, because it was my dissertation, although it was a long time ago. But what I didn't know was how that is to be merged with shoes that are manufactured, the types of shoes they make, and what types of shoes they make for different types of feet, gait, people. So here's what I did. I went away and researched, and I wanted to know the things that you would need to know if you wanted to pick a shoe that are universal across all of us. What are the things that we all need to know before we can make an informed decision about the type of shoe that we want? And I've managed to narrow it down to two things that we really need to know. Because these are my shoes. They're the selection of shoes that I currently use for different situations. But I got to choosing these shoes through a process that I'm gonna share with you now so that you can pick the right shoes for you. And what you're gonna to need to know is what colors are your favorite colors? No, that's not right. No. No, what you're actually going to need to know is what your foot type is and what type of gait you have. And they're really both pretty easy to find out. And once you know those two things, it really narrows your shoe selection choice down by about a third because there are lots of different shoes for those different things. So shoes, if picked correctly, complement the type of foot that you have because there are so many different types and shapes of feet that once you know what shape and type of foot you have, you can select the right trainer for it. So what you need to do is check what your footprint is like on the floor because we all have different arches and the arch is the bit of the foot underneath that curves up. And some of us have high arches, some of us have low arches, some of us even have flat feet. And that's probably the first thing we need to do. And the easiest way of doing it is the wet test. Right, the first thing you need is a piece of cardboard. Then take your sock off, roll your trouser leg up or whatever, run a small bit of water in your bath. Put your foot in that, oh it's cold, oh it's cold. Put your foot in the water, get it wet. Then shake it off a bit to the piece of cardboard and you're just going to walk over it quite briefly like that and I will have left a footy imprint now if you look at your footy imprint mine is just over halfway there which means my arch is still quite high it's not collapsed you would see a completely 
filled in pattern of a foot there if you had a collapsed arch but neither is it this far out here and me being a supinator so that's just a nice quick way called the wet test of working out roughly the type of foot shape that you have so boom you now know what your foot looks like in contact with the ground you know if you've got low arches or a flat foot you know if you're neutral or if you've got high arches that's step one the second thing you need to do is know what your foot looks like when moving and the first thing I need to explain is the three main categories of gait that shoe manufacturers consider when making their trainers. The first is neutral. This means that your foot rolls from back to front when in contact with the ground, roughly down the middle. This is ideal because it means your body is in good alignment and the knees, hips and ankles can do their shock absorption bit. The second is overpronation, which means your foot tends to collapse inwards when running, putting the legs out of alignment and causing stress on the joints, tendons and ligaments. Lots of people with low or collapsed arches or flat feet tend to overpronate. And the third category is supination, which is basically the opposite of overpronation, where you land on the outside of your foot in your gait. And again, this causes stress on the joints, tendons and ligaments because it limits the body's ability to absorb the shock properly. And as with everything, not many of us will fit perfectly into one of these categories. You may slightly supinate or be between overpronation and neutral, but it's a starting point to know the information. So once you know the three main gait categories, I mean, there are nuances and you can fit in between, but predominantly you'll be in one or the other. You need to know which one you actually are. So here's the easiest way of doing it and the cheapest and quickest. And that is to get your oldest pair of trainers that you still run in and check the tread. So if you have a look at mine, the tread is quite clearly worn away along the middle, which tells me that I'm predominantly a neutral runner which means that there are a certain amount of trainers on offer for me. But if the wear was to be on the outside of the trainer here, then I would know that I'm a supinator, as I explained earlier, and you know what happens with supinator, they run on the outside of their feet. But if the wear is on the inside, the tread here, that would mean that I'm an overpronator. And the great thing is that there are shoes made for all of those three running styles to keep you safe, injury free and get the fastest out of you. And the other option is get yourself to your local running store because these guys know what they're talking about. They're passionate about running and they'll be able to get you a gait analysis. Most running stores, especially local ones like Up and Running in Seven Oaks, they have a treadmill where you can get on there. They'll do a gait analysis and then they'll be able to point you in the direction of the shoes for you. It's a no brainer if you are looking to buy new shoes. All right, all right, all right. I know what you actually want to know. You actually want to know which type of shoe that you should be looking for for yourself now that you know the type of foot you have and the gait that you have. And I'll get to that right now. All right. You're really, really lucky if you're a neutral runner because the options are quite vast. They're, they're a lot bigger than those of us that overpronate and those of us that supinate. But if you're a neutral runner, then you look for a neutral shoe. And most websites, when you search on them, A6, Nike, Reebok, they tell you which shoes are made for which types of runners, which is really, really helpful. And there's plenty of reviews out there. So neutral shoe for neutral runner, that's pretty simple. It gets a little bit more complicated when we get to, let's say, an overpronator. So an overpronator, as in your foot collapses to the inside, your foot is either flat or your arches are low and it collapses inwards and puts the body out of alignment. Now, what you need to do with these types of shoes is you need to control the motion. So the shoe that you're looking for is called motion control or stability shoe. And all it really means is that there's an extra amount of foam and padding on the inside that stops you from being able to collapse inwards and protects those arches. So if you are an overpronator, then you're looking for a motion control or stability shoe. And supinators. Now, if you're a supinator and you land on the outside of your shoe, then we talked about it earlier, it stops the body doing its natural shock absorption because all of the tension, all of the impact is going up the sides of the leg, not nicely flush down the middle through the knee and the hip. So what you need is if you're a supinator, you need an extra cushion shoe because what you need is the shoe to do the shock absorption job that your ankle, knees and hips 
aren't getting the chance to do. Uh, so that would be my advice. Supernatus extra cushion shoe to do the job of shock absorbing. And you actually have that option of cushion shoe if you're a neutral runner as well, if you just want that little bit of extra cushioning and padding. Let's say that you tend to run a lot longer miles, then, then cushioning might be something that you're, you're looking for in your shoe to cover those miles safely. And once you get to there, you're able to get nuanced about your shoe choice. And that's the exciting bit. Once you've narrowed it down into one of those three categories, then you've got your choices out there. Every single brand has shoes made for all of those three types of running gait, in fact, loads. So that's the exciting bit. When you've narrowed it down to whether you need a motion control stability type shoe or whether you need a cushion shoe because you're a supinator or whether you're a neutral so you can get cushioned or ideal, that's when the fun starts, guys. That's when you can really drill down. But if you're on the internet watching all these shoe reviews from all of these trainer channels and people doing the reviews, then it's brilliant. Get a flavor for these shoes, but you might be watching a review for a shoe that absolutely is not made for you. It's not made for a supinator. It might be made for an overpronator. So these skills, this knowledge, is what you need before you go out into the world and try and select a shoe for you. That's what I'm trying to help you with here. Cut your way through the waffle, cut your way through the faff, cut your way through the billions of shoe choices that are out there. Oh, and one last thing. The choice that I didn't tell you about is of course, all of the trainers I've showed you so far are my trainers for running on road, but then there is a whole new selection of trail shoes just for you and again they're made for different gates but as well they're made with different levels of grip and weight and and all sorts so you can look into those as well these are you know trail shoes are to take you off road in all sorts of weather so you have that option as well to move into that that's there's slightly less choice with trail shoe but there's still a lot of choice all right i think i summed that up pretty nicely i mean I hope I summed it up pretty nicely. Let me know. Let me know. Here's what I want to know. What's your favorite shoe at the moment? Because as much as I'm giving you the knowledge you need to pick your shoe, I still, for the most part, am baffled by the amount of choice out there. So I'm keen to know what shoes work for you, what you like for different situations. Share with me those shoe choices of yours. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, then consider it because I have two of possibly my most exciting announcements coming over the next two weeks, over the next two Sundays that I cannot wait to share with you. I can barely contain the information right now, but it is coming and it is exciting and it will really benefit you and this channel and be able to help me help you even, even more. Right. I now have to go because I have to put the video together for Sunday. I'm very excited about it. See you then.